Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Vern, The Shape of Fantasy, where we are trying to sneak past these nation soldiers, and it's uh, a little bit tricky. We've um, we've died quite a few times. Feels like it could potentially be getting towards the end of the game, and we need to use the iMag we discovered last time. So we're going to wait for this guy to head off. Quickly follow him. Oh, I don't know if we've left it a bit too long this time. Oh, this could be bad. This could be very, very bad. Oh, we're just about in. All right. So, uh, we need to use the iMac here to do unstable Stones beams. Stones fell violently from the highest part of the tunnel, warning the guards. So, yeah, I think the idea is that the guards will that. investigate that. I don't know if we've done that too early. Do we... I don't know if we go behind him or down the ladder. That's the problem. Is he going to come back? Let's just see what happens. Let's just wait here and see what happens. Uh, I don't think he's coming back. So that makes me think we go down the ladder. Oh no, there's more guards down here. Jeez. Alright, let's wait here. We'll see what's going on. See uh, if we can figure out any patterns. So there's a guy on the left. And there's a guy on the right. At least we managed to get past that bit though. Right, let's see. I, I think we probably want to go behind this block to begin with. Can we do any IMAG stuff? No, we can't. I imagine we don't want to go left here. I imagine it's a case of wanting to go right. So, let's see if we can sneak behind that other box once these guys set off. There is a light there, which makes me a little bit nervous. Uh, oh no, we're hidden. Okay, we're fine. Go, go, Vern, go, 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 go. Okay. Something to do with Hephaestus there. Oh, two more guards. It's lucky we didn't head off there. Oh, okay. Uh, do we want to go this way? I don't know if we do. I don't know if we do. Oh, okay. Oh, geez. Okay, the raven is right here. Can we eye mag? We cannot iMag. Okay. Uh, God, what do we do here? We, we just can't iMag, so... Unless we just literally make a run for it when he goes back. That could be a thing. There is, like, some broken-looking machinery stuff on the left. I don't know if we can iMag that. Let's just go this way and see what happens. Everything's over, damn raven. Okay, here we there. go. Mr. Vare, at last. Brothers, lower your guns. If you are trying to look kind to me, I don't think it will work. I would never use flattery with you. It would be an insult to your wit. I want to share with you my vision of a better new world. Lies. <laughs> I'm not interested in your delusions of grandeur. You're blinded by the present, Fair. Forget about now. Think about the future. You and I. We are special. Superior. United under the power of the artifact, we can rebuild the world. No more nation, no more empires, no more wars. <clears throat> it's the same you dream with, isn't it? I doubt that the world you dream of resembles mine. You are a monster. You disappoint me. With or without you, I will find a way to make the iMag work. We will have fun in the torture chamber. I Take him! <clears throat> I don't want to go to the torture chamber. Oh god, okay, okay, I was not expecting that. But we just about recovered it. Oh! Oh my god, did we drown him? Now the Nautilus is yours forever. Enjoy it. Wow. Uh, well that dealt with him, the bloody raven. Commander Hetzel, raised in a, a family associated with power since the old time, since the times of the old Prussian kingdom, Hetzel learned early on to hate the hypocrisy and plots that defined politics and the day-to-day -day life of the elites in the city. Fleeing that decadent and unhealthy environment, he enlisted in the army at a very young age to fight on the front line. Having fought in the Asian War of the 30s, he made rapid progress through his victories, his strategic talent, and the loyalty he earned from his men. 
He inaugurated his position as commander by founding the elite Echo Guard Corps, and, in his desire to become the terror of his enemies, he had a suit of armour made for him that resembled a raven. From that moment on, he took the nickname Bloody Raven. When he was assigned to the campaign against the Golden Empire of Africa, he was appointed Warden of the Terramine Prison, making it his base of operations and source of income. When Nemo and his companions arrived laden with chains, the Raven rejoiced at having the honour of being in charge of torturing and breaking the very famous Captain Nemo. However, he underestimated the man and it cost him dearly. In one of his torture sessions, Nemo managed to cut his face with a piece of metal hidden in his sleeve, completely disfiguring him. He had, a, uh, he had a mask forged that from that moment on, he would never take off in public. Before he could execute Nemo, he and his companions escaped, destroying the mine prison in the process. That became Bloody Raven's greatest and deepest shame. The captain became his obsession, driving him to the point of abandoning the African front with his Echo Guard in order to hunt him down. The chase halfway around the world gradually revealed to him the technological wonders hidden in the Nautilus and something that changed everything, the existence of the Flame of Hephaestus. Hetzel realised that stopping the captain would not only open the door to all the inventions created by his brilliant mind, but would also give him access to an infinite source of energy, an unrivaled power to destroy all his enemies and those hypocritical politicians who ruled the nation. Hetzel is a supremacist. He seeks to exterminate all his enemies whom he considers inferior. He does not seek peace, he seeks domination. He considers himself a great hero and the herald of the god of war. <clears throat> well, well, well. He's not here anymore, though, is he? Mon Dieu. Imagination rises. Open the door of the flame of Hephaestus. Okay, can we do anything back this way? No. Okay, uh, what have we got here? Jules, did you find him? Are you alright? Yes. The raven is not our worry anymore. And Phobos? Not a sign. Can I use the iMag to open this? I'm afraid that this time it won't be that easy. Of course. Luckily, we have this. Concentrated blue blood from the Nautilus. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, Nautilus is blue blood. Okay. What do we do with that, then? There's something we can do there. What's over this way? Oh, nothing. And we can't use the iMag here, no? <coughs> no. All right. Looks like we've li literally just got to do this, then. Whatever this thing is. I need something that can help me. All right, blue blood. As soon as it has come into contact, Ooh. the blue blood has activated. Use the controls. Select the right symbol. Select a circle. Rotate the circle. Uh, okay. Oh, I see. So. We've got three stars there. Looks like we've got one star, one triangle, three triangles, and then two triangles. So I wonder if we've got to like replicate the the pattern. So let's see what we can do. So there is a symbol like that. There isn't a two stars, there isn't a three stars. So I'm guessing that's the correct one there. Uh a downward one, two downwards ones. Uh, hmm, maybe I'm not quite right about that. <clears throat> um, so there is a. Okay, let's let's just see what else we've got here. Three facing downwards. Okay, three facing upwards. Okay. I mean, what do we actually need to do here? The blue blood is only supplying a small portion of energy. You will have to solve it as fast as you can. I mean, yeah, fine, but what are we actually... What are we actually trying to do? Is there, like, a, a code? Okay, so that one opens that and that. Those two symbols look about right. Okay. So two. Huh. I mean. I mean, it would help if I actually knew what I was trying to achieve here. I mean, am I just trying to? 
I trying to like line them up? Is that is that what we're doing here? Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm honestly not sure what the the point of this puzzle is. And the and the, obviously the blue blood runs out. So. All right, so. It's got to be something to do with these symbols. There's there's two one symbols, a three symbol, and a two symbol. So I don't know if it's a case of like it's a sequence. You've got to do it like two, one, one, three, something like that. I, I it doesn't really make too much sense, does it? I would imagine you've got to display the symbols that are dotted around, lit up on the background, but how you do that is, is another matter. Yeah, I don't... Hang on, let's let this run out and we'll try again. I'm, I imagine it is something like that, where you have to... You basically got to get the same symbols as, as was on the... You know, the wall. But we'll see. No. I mean, obviously some of the symbols... Rotate the circles until the same symbols on the wall are visible. Keep in mind that each circle moves another one. Yes, so it is that. So we've basically got to light up the same symbol. Well, we've got to choose the same symbols that the the lights show, right? So it shouldn't be too difficult, I wouldn't have thought. Let's, uh, let's try it again. So, I mean, I don't know if there's a particular order to do this in. That's the problem. So we've got the two downward facing triangles there. And the three upward facing triangles. Okay, we need... Yeah, so that's... That's relatively okay. We don't want three stars. We want two... St okay. Uh, we don't want two. We don't... Okay. Uh, so what do we want in this one? Just the one, right? So that's not going to work. So, no, we don't want... Hang on, let's... Okay, so what have we got there? We've got one facing up. So that's... It's not quite right. This one's wrong. Uh, okay, so that's not quite right again. No, okay, it's run out. Fine. Um, geez, this is really tricky. Let's see. So, we want one star. So, what does that... What does each one move? That moves the two middle ones, right? This one moves... That one and the outer one. This one moves those two. And this one moves the outer one and the inner one. So, let's see if we can... So that's, that's actually fine. So now, that's actually fine as well. So, it, we really only need to get this one to be the right symbol. Which symbol would that be, though? Is it that one? I, d I don't know. And there we go! Yes! Alright, it took a little inside. while. <laughs> God, okay, that was uh, somewhat tricky, actually. A lot trickier than I was expecting it to be. Absolutely marvellous. Okay, the flame of Hephaestus. 
The Energy of Atlantis. In the year 6500 BC, a group of Atlantean explorers landed on a remote island. There they found an extinct volcano, and inside it something that would change the destiny of their people forever. An immense floating ball of light. They christened it the Flame of Hephaestus. Atlantis experts believe that the flame was an accumulation of gases contained in the structure of the volcano, which when traversed by a flow of electrons produced discharges of electricity that generated light and a very powerful energy. The Atlanteans exploited this discovery immediately. In barely more than 10 years, the flame was feeding the whole of Atlantis through a network of conduits and a golden age began. Her technology was unparalleled and trade flourished in an unimaginable way. Her prosperity attracted people from all over the world. However, among the Atlanteans, there were those who believed that foreigners could steal the flame from them and they became more and more hostile towards them. Fear dominated them. <clears throat> they transformed their city into an impregnable castle and subjected to slavery those they considered unworthy of being Atlantean citizens. They squandered almost all their wealth on erecting an underwater barrier around the island of the Flame of Hephaestus designed to alter the climate and currents to make it unreachable. Over time, they relegated the maintenance of the huge network that distributed the flame to the most miserable slaves. With this state of affairs, a small accident could trigger a tragedy, and that's what happened when a soldier crashed a slave into a fragile pipe. A leak caused a spark, and then... Disaster. Alright, <clears throat> there it is, the flame of Hephaestus. Unleash the flame. Looks like we have to uh, do just that. What do we do? Just use the eye magic? Hello, little sister. Oh. Thanks for opening Phobos. the door for me. Phobos, Vern, activate. Oh no. Excuse me for using this ruse with you, but I need you to listen to me, Vern. Why does he look like us? You are the shadow on the bridge. Placea, you must accept your defeat and stop confusing Vern with Liberty Dreams out of his reach. She didn't show you the whole picture. I am the fear that inhabits inside your mind. Yes, but I don't want its destruction. The only reason of my existence is protecting us from pain. How is it that you still don't understand that you'll be happier with me here than on the outside, in a world that doesn't love nor understand you? Don't listen to him. He wants to corrupt your imagination. That's untrue. I just want the best for him. You came to this world looking for protection from reality, fleeing from failure and shame, because you knew that here you would find everything you've always craved for. Adventures, mysteries, extraordinary journeys. Why do you want to return to your world? Here, you can be happy forever. I don't believe him. I can do it, and I just need one thing to achieve it. Destroy the iMac. What? Quit your impossible rider dreams. Destroy the iMac. Give me the control of your world, and you will never feel pain or rejection again. Uh, let no. me think. No. I don't want to hide. Now that I've seen what I can create, I want to show it to the world. At all costs. Grr, that is delusional. I can't allow you to suffer. I don't want more pain. We must protect ourselves. If you don't want an eternal paradise, I will drown you in a grayish terror that will make you want to keep your head inside a hole in the ground. You will live the rest of your days working as an accountant for the nation's factories. Don't try to resist. You are just a sad scribbler with a head filled with preposterous predictions. Yes, that is what I am. What I always wanted to be. Better than a coward who hides from himself. Yeah. All right. The hard way, then. I will turn the flame of Hephaestus with my imagination. I will write the end to this story of yours, of the Imag, Placea, and the Nautilus. The nation will prevail forever inside your mind. Then, I hope you like smoke and ashes. Uh-oh. Uh, can we... Can we do anything here? Can we Imag? <laughs> His control has faded. We're free. Nice. Uh, what do we do? Don't you open. Ooh. Okay. Come on. Let's try again. Why don't you open? All right. My predictions seem preposterous to you. 
Don't read my book. <laughs> Very good. Whoa. I'm glad that despite your criticism, you recalled my theories regarding Atlantean mythology. That thing you came out with about sand and rust was catchy. I made the guess that if the iMag is my creative imagination catalyst, when coming into contact with destructive imagination, it should annul it. Luckily enough, it worked. Has Phobos disappeared forever? Doubt Not it. quite. Fear is terrible, but sometimes it's necessary. What has vanished is Phobos's control over your mind. You're finally free from him. Thanks, Jules, for saving us. I wish I could stay. May I see you again? We are inside you. Always will be. We are the shape of fantasy. It's time to go back home. Imagination Rises complete. And Journey to the Center of Himera, Chapter 7 complete. Uh... Hiding from reality only nurtures fear. And our only chance to defeat it is our hope. The ability to imagine a better world. I had to take note of all these events before they were lost and deformed by the treacherous currents of my memory. And here I am, back into my world. The real world. All right, so we're back in the real world. Nice. <gasps> After Jules Verne was hit harshly by the rejection in 1860 of his dark novel Paris in the 20th Century, the author recovered and during the following years wrote a series of stories full of imagination and optimism that forever changed literature and have served as inspiration to all humanity. And there we have it! Jules Verne, wow! Um, really cool there he is Jules Verne 1856 this was good um really good in fact I really really enjoyed playing this and uh, something that I wasn't sure I would say given that it wasn't uh you know classic point and click adventure game more of a side scrolling thing I actually really liked it um thought it was good the story is fantastic I love what they did with the the Jules Verne type thing having him in this sort of in his mind this this world that he created in his mind and then having like the, the overlap thing and then the way that was revealed is really cool um i liked that nemo was like a bad guy and then had to redeem himself um there's a lot to like about this game the pixel art is wonderful um puzzles there was a real mix there was some stuff that was you know pretty pretty easy there was some stuff that really made me think a couple of the puzzles i was stuck on for quite a while this one at the end and um the one with the decoding thing earlier in the game that that took me quite a while um yeah i i liked this a lot i i think this was a really good game one bugbear i had with it was some of the translation things especially in like the last quarter of the game i don't know if you guys noticed it but the the quality of the translation seemed to drop off and i, I don't mind that as such because i know english isn't you know the first language of the developers but the thing that's the most jarring about it is when you have different text in the text box to what the characters are saying like just odd words here and there and that that sort of breaks the immersion of the world for me like i, I found i was getting drawn out of what I was experiencing because of those jarring little, I don't know, errors I would call them. That is the one thing that I wasn't massively keen on. Um, it's almost like a proof checking thing. Like it, it feels like it's something that could potentially have been, you know, tidied up without too much effort. I mean, I don't know, but here we go one year later. Mm, this letter, it must be important. Vern, we need your help at Hemera. The Nautilus is plowing through waters again, and Cedric has finally found a vaccine uh. that we must deliver to the whole world. Signed, E. Well. Oh my God! But how? Potential sequel? Or just like a continuation? Something to to invent in your mind maybe um yeah i i liked it i thought it was it paid great homage to to jules verne and his novels i loved the little bios and the background research that obviously went into him and his works i think that's absolutely fantastic honestly i think if those little translation issues were were rectified um 
I, I, it, yeah, I think it would be, you know, like a 9 out of 10 game for me. Um, just, just that one minor bugbear, in my opinion. But, honestly, really enjoyed it still. Um, that, you know, that hasn't ruined the game for me in any sense. And yeah, it's, it's been great. It's been really great. I'm glad that I played this on the channel as well um, to share it with you guys because it's been a really fun experience. Um, next up in the new releases off schedule slot will be uh, Telltale's The Expanse. So we'll be jumping into that very soon. But for now, a big thank you to my patrons, Arcades Games, Wayne Nate, Terminally Nerdy, Paul from the Phantom Fellows, Lyle, Barry Aldridge, Hobo, Numinous, Coumadin and Paul Leone. And I will see you next time for The Expanse.